Pleasant morning children. I hope you are all safe and good. Today we are going to recall the chapter 8 and 9. The important points I have listed here we will recall one by one. First chapter 8 body movements. Locomotion. What is locomotion? The movement of organism from place to place that is called as locomotion. Locomotion in human body. It is mainly because of human skeleton. It forms a framework that gives shape and support to our body. So without skeleton, our body it is shapeless. It consists of 206 bone. It protects internal organ. The main work of the bone it is to protect the soft internal organ. The human skeleton has two parts. First it is axial skeleton and it is appendicular skeleton system. In axial skeleton, it composed of the skull, vertebral column, the chest bone, in other words, the rib cage. An appendicular skeleton system. It includes the hip griddle and the limbs, the hand and the leg bones. Human skeleton is made up of, it is bone, cartilage, tough fibers, collagen, and ligaments. Bones, they are unique combination of flexible and stiffness. Cartilage, it is a flexible bone. It gives support to our body in the parts like ear and nose. It also connects the bone together. Tough fibers and tendons. Tendons are strong. It is a white cord. It is made from collagen. They attach it to the bones. Collagen Bone and just born babies made of soft fiber protein, it is called as collagen. This can be observed in the just born babies. Ligaments, it is made from the cords or sheaths. Next, we are going to discuss about skull. Skull, it protects brain. It is a rigid box made up of plates of bone firmly joined together. Skull is a bony forming the cranium, the brain case and the face. So it does protecting the brain. It is called as brain case. 22 small flat big bones join to form skull. It is not a single bone. It is made up of 22 small flat bones. 8 flat bones are fitted together to forming the protective box for the brain. 14 bones are of different shape fuses together to form the face okay the facial bones next it is about rib cage it is a flexible case of ribs each ribs curves around the side of the chest from the backbone and it is joined in front to the plate bone called sternum the ribs are connected to one another by the muscle Two lowermost pairs of ribs are called as floating ribs. Backbone or vertebral column. It is also called the spine or vertebral column. Backbone, it is made up of 33 ring-like pieces. Each piece is called as vertebra. It is a chain of small bones called as vertebrae. It protects the spinal cord which carries the message between the brain and to the body. It also supports the skull, ribs and limbs. And next it is about limbs. It is made up of long bones with joints allow them to move. So limbs it is mainly the leg and the hand bones. They mainly used for support. Arms. Forearm is made up of two bones and the hands have several small bones. Shoulder bones have the pair of collar bones in front and the pair of shoulder plates. So arms, they are telling about the forearm. It is made up of two bones and in the hand we have the several small bones and including the finger bones also. Shoulder bones, we have the pair of collar bones and in the front, it is in the front and in the pair of shoulder blades, it is in the back. Legs. Lower leg is made up of two bones and feet it has several bones. Small bones is present in the feet. Hip bone or griddle bear. The weight of the body 
and or attached to the thigh bones so these are the leg bones and next joint the point where two bones meet it is called as joint it allows the moving to take place bones are held together by ligaments movable joint so movable joint it allows the movement between the bones and it has a cartilage between them the soft tissue type of movable joint hind joint it allows the movement only in one plane backward and forward for example it is an elbow joint knee joint the joint between phalanx and fingers and in the toes next joint it is ball and socket joint it permits a circular movement so which is present in the shoulder the example is shoulder gliding joint it allows the bone to slide a little this for example the bone which is present inside the wrist and the feet pivotal joint joint where the neck joins the head that is called as pivotal joint it allow the head to move backward forward and turn right and left immovable joint in other words it is fixed joint the bones cannot move at this joint example the bones which is present in the skull joint between the upper jaw and the rest of the skull that is called is immobile fixed joint they can't able to move locomotion in other animals it is first we are going to discuss about fish locomotion is achieved by the lateral contraction of the muscular body with a final thrust by the tail so tail it is a balancing organ fish swims by forming the loops alternatively on two sides of the body so because of that streamlined body they can able to move very fast in the water birds when the large flight muscle contract they pull the wing down and they make a flight so because of the flight muscle and the bones which is hollow and light so because of that they can make their flight very easy snail they have the muscular foot so which helps them in locomotion earthworms they move by stretching out the body in front and keeping in the hind end fixed to the ground so one part of the portion will be get contracted and remaining it is get relaxed so by this they can make their movement bones are moved alternate contraction and relaxation of two sets of muscle because of the two sets of muscles getting contraction and relaxation the bones can able to move the bone joints are of various kind depending upon the nature of the joint and direction of the movement they allow strong muscle and the light bones work together to help the bird to fly they fly by flapping their wings so they have the strong muscle and light bones so this is a very helpful them for flying snakes slither on the ground by looping sideways a large number of bones are associated muscle pushes the body forward so in snake we have seen that snakes slithering on the ground they make the loops they form a loop and they will move large number of bones are get connected which is attached to the muscle so that only they can able to make the loop the body and legs of cockroach have the heart covering forming an outer skeleton in cockroach we can able to find the heart covering that is called as outer skeleton the muscle of the breast connected with the three pairs of leg and two pairs of the wing which helps the cockroach to walk and fly so the muscles which is in the breast region which is connected to their three pairs of legs and the two pairs of wings so which is helping them in their walk by their legs and flying with their wings so this is about the chapter 8 and next we are going to discuss about chapter 9 living organism and their surroundings the surroundings where plants and animals live it is called as their habitat so where they can get their basic needs it is that place it is called as habitat several kinds of plants and animals 
may share the same habitat. So we are, our earth it is composed of several varieties of plants and different organisms. So all the organisms have different habitat and some organisms they have the common habitat. The presence of specific features and habits which enable the plant or an animal to live in a particular place it is called as adaptation. Adaptation means they are having a specific feature and based upon the habitats the plant or an animal the organism which is able to live in that able to survive in that particular habitat it is called as adaptation. There are many type of habitat however these may be broadly grouped as terrestrial which is referred as land, aquatic which is referred as water. There is a wide variety of organism present in different habitat. Plants, animals and microorganisms together constitute biotic components. Biotic means it is living. Rock, soil, air, water, light, temperature or some of the abiotic components of our surrounding. Abiotic means it is non-living. A it refers for absence and biotic it is living. Absence of living is abiotic. Characteristic of living organisms. The characteristic of living things. So what are the common characteristic? All the living organism they need food, air, water to grow and for other purpose. Okay. And the young ones grow into adult. So in all organism, they born as an infant and they will be growing as an adult. So growth is seen. They respire. Animals breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. Plants take in carbon dioxide and give out oxygen. However, the gas may get vary, but respiration process is same in living organism. Their response to change in the surrounding, it is called as stimuli. They are responding to the factor. They all get rid of waste produced in the body. This process it is called as excretion. So we are moving out, throwing out the waste from our body. That process it is called as excretion. They reproduce their own kind. So reproduction it is a common thing. They have a definite lifespan. So each organism, they have the particular lifespan. They have a particular structure and are made up of cells. They show movements. So it is made up of cells. All the organisms, all the living organisms made up of cells and they can show the movement. So by that we can be able to find it is a living organism. Habitat. Habitat is a place where an organism finds its comfort, safety, food, water, air, shelter and suitable condition for breeding and for the survival. It has two components, biotic living things like plants and animals and abiotic it is non-living things, rock, soil, air and water. Biotic components, autotrophs, autotrophs make their own food. Auto means self and trop means it is nutrition. So green plants are autotrophs. So in green plants, they have the chlorophyll pigment. They can able to prepare their own food. So it is referred as autotrophs. Whereas in heterotrophs, hetero means different or others and trop it is nutrition. So they depend on other organism for their nutrition. Herbivore, the plant and the grass eating animals. Carnivore, the flesh or meat eating animals. Omnivores, which eat both plants and the flesh. Habitats provides almost everything to the organism which it is needed by it. So these are the heterotrophs. Abiotic components, the examples are light, temperature, water, humidity, rain, soil, air and wind and height of the place, plain or hill. So these are the abiotic component. Type of habitat, terrestrial habitat. So which is they are living on land. So the plants and animals which live in land. Some terrestrial habitats are seashore, the coastal area. It is like in the mangrove forest, the coconut palm or some common example. On the bank of pond and lake, 
If you see the organisms like frog, turtle, alligator, crocodile and duck etc. Life on land. For example, it is a cat, deer, lion, tiger, cow. These are the animals and plants growing on land under the normal condition of moderate temperature and availability of the water are called as mesophytes. So they are the uh, plants which is growing in the land with the availability of water that is called as mesophyte. The desert habitats on land, example it is cactus, euphorbora, aloe, lizard, snake, camel. So here the cactus it is referred as zero fight. So their absence of water. Underground habitats like moles, beetle, cricket, termite, millipede, ant. Plants and animals living on hill and mountain. The example it is yak bear, hill goat, flying fox or the examples. Plants in the hill are mostly conical and evergreen. They bear the deep growing roots. The stem is woody. It bears the needle like leaf. Plants are mostly xerophytes. Example it is apple, pear, plum, apricot, walnut, almond. High snowy peaks and polar region. The example it is polar bear, it has a white bear and other example it is penguin. Arboreal and aerial habitat. Arbor means a tree. Organism living on trees or arboreal, for example it is honeybee, cedar, owls, birds and numerous insects. So these are the terrestrial that is a land living habitats. In aquatic habitats, plants and animals that live in water, for example, it is pond, swamp, lake, river and ocean. Plants growing in water, it is called as hydrophytes. Hydro means water. Plant body is covered with slippery substance, it is called as mucilage. Adaptation, presence of specific feature or certain habitat which enables an organism to live in its surrounding. So that is called as adaptation. Adaptation helps an organism acquiring the certain characteristic which helps it in being able to live in their habitat. The adaptation may be related to their habitat or related to their body structure. So adaptation, it is mainly of, they have to depend on their habitat or else because of their body structure they are choosing that particular habitat. Terrestrial it is desert, mountain, grassland. Desert region small animals stay in burrows deep in the sand during the daytime and they come out in the night time. So in the daytime it is very hot so they avoid coming out. In plants leaf either absent or it is very small as spines. This is to lower the transpiration rate. Stem has thick waxy coating and root it goes very deep into the soil in search of water. Mountain region. Animals have thick skin or fur. This is to overcome the cold region. Mountain goat have the strong hooves which can able to jump from one mountain to the other. Trees are cone shaped having the sloping branches, leaves are needle like. The cone shape and sloping branches it is because to release the snow which is get deposited. Grassland, animals are light brown in color, example it is lion, they have the long claws in front. So this light brown color they can match with its background and long claws it is for Hunting its prey. It is get withdrawn inside their toes and eye in front of the face. So this able to locate its prey. Deer. It has strong teeth. So with that strong teeth they can able to chew the hard branches. Long ears. Eyes on the side of the head. So long ears. With the long ears they can able to hear the sensitive sound. Aquatic. Regions, pond, the plants with root fixed in the soil, they have the long stem 
hollow on light the leaves float on the water so the stem they are submerged in the water the leaves alone float on the top of the water plant with roots submerge leaves are narrow and they have the thin ribbon like leaves the plants with roots submerged it is completely present inside the water so that kind of thing they will have the leaves and the it will be narrow and thin ribbon like leaves will be present and next habitat it is ocean organisms living in this sea it is called as marine plants and marine animals plants animals have the streamlined body gills to rest air whereas in dolphin and whales they have the blow holes for their respiration animals like squid and octopus they do not have the streamlined body but they stay deep in the water this is about the chapter 9 we will meet in the next session thank you children